we have here a slightly new product on the market it's a filament dryer box one of them has been launched on the kickstarter and the other one i think it's a copy of the kickstarter campaign one we're going to make a short unboxing then we're going to test and see the difference between them and uh, how they are performing Here we have the e-box from Isan, 3D printer filament storage box. And here we have a from Sulu Fila Dryer S1 was launched on the Kickstarter. And the Isan probably make copy, but in my opinion, at least on the paper, this is an improved version. seems to be slightly bigger there are differences in between them I like the solo design more this one is coming with an adapter for the tube I think it can be fitted upwards or downwards. And it's made from rubber. And this is 3mm Teflon tube, which is for the Sunlu. We have AC adapter of 2 amps at 24 volts, while for the e -sun, we have 3 amps at 12 volts. Let's power up the, the boxes and see how they are performing. On Sulu, we don't have any power rating or any, any label. On E-Box, we have the power supply voltage and the wattage. I have 4 of these. Hopefully I'm not gonna mix up the power supplies. This is the 24 volts one. So I will connect it to the solo. Let's power them up. So far the screen visibility it is very poor, at least from this angle. as well on the e -sun. I believe this one start to hit in 42 degrees here it's having a noise on backlight this is the temperature setting is going to maximum 55 degrees and here it's having a timer maximum 24 hours very simple and straightforward menu now it's up to the maximum temperature and apparently on this part is very very hot which is corresponding with that uh, hot uh, hot plate inside of the box you have here a 10 percent discount you can use it let's see the eastern one doesn't have a only sun backlight as you can see, the display is smaller. Inside is a load cell, and the filament is pushing against that uh, load cell, load cell or weight sensor. Seems to work fine. For the small uh, filament rolls, you can move the bearing shafts from this position to here. So it's gonna accommodate the smaller roll as well. Well, this one doesn't have such a feature. 
In my point of view, the weight uh, sensor is a very nice feature because it is telling you how much filament you have left on your spool and you know if it's gonna be enough to finish the print or not. The weight setting, as I seen from the manual, the default mode is to 220 grams. Tarring the weight scale or setting up the parameters of the weight scale, is, it is very simple. Let me try to show you. I will set this to zero. Yeah. And I will add my spool, then uh, write down the weight of the spool. This one is having 316 grams. Probably it's going to change now, yeah. I'm going to WOC menu and put here 320. Then I save it and now should show me zero, which it does. Now any added weight is going to be counted in as filament. Let's see the temperature settings. We have three levels of temperature. One is 50 degrees, then 60, 70 and 80 degrees. 80 degrees is the temperature of the hot plate, but actually temperature inside of the box is 50 degrees, like this one. And the humidity should drop after a while to 15%. In order to go to the temperature, we have to press the menu three times and one, two, and three, and four, level four. So I'll set it to the maximum level. It's having a fan and as well a uh, space for the second bags. And I suppose that this is the hot plate. Yeah, so the green, uh, green PCB inside is the hot plate, and we have a fan there which is gonna circulate the air. So once you put the desiccant, good job, the air is gonna blow into the desiccant, which is good. So it's active dry system. This is the timer, maximum 18 hours. So yeah, I cannot find the temperature, the inside temperature reading. Maybe I don't know how to switch to the temperature reading. I would like to see the temperature on the screen itself. I'm going to leave them together here and compare the thermal readings. Probably both of them reach the maximum internal temperature. Uh, what I've noticed that the Isan, it is having a thermostat inside. You can actually hear it clicking. Yeah, the temperature inside of the box is regulated by a thermostat, while on this one probably is regulated electronically because it is monitoring the temperature, while this one it doesn't have a temperature sensor, or I don't know how to. <laughs> How to address it. The power adapters are not running very very hot. This one it's it is a little bit hotter than the Sunlu. The Sunlu one it doesn't produce any noises while on this one you can hear the thermostat clicking and the fan constantly blowing. I cannot tell the difference between the two 
but clearly this one is not acting properly when the filament is pulled out. Let's try the tip. They are made from a very good quality plastic with gloss finish. Both of them seem to have similar build quality. The e-box from Nissan is having few few features which I am considering important. The first one is that it's having a load cell inside of it, a fan along with a compartment for desiccant. Basically. The air is circulated and is blow into the desiccant, so probably it's going to do a very good job drying the, the filament. Also, tube, which is coming with the ASEN e-box. It's a nice accessory. The downside of this box is that it's noisy. It's having a thermostat, which is clicking on and off according to the inside temperature. And uh, yeah, pretty much that's it. The ESAN seems to be a little bit better quality, clean design, um, doesn't have too many features, only you can set up the temperature and the timer. As you see, it's having a design flow, the filament is not sitting properly inside of the box and is putting strain on the, on the extruder. I like this box because it's silent and I can see the temperature, the inside temperature, but I think it's not worth it. To be honest, neither of them are worth it because they are not energy friendly. In order to dry up the filament, you're gonna consume electricity. What I use so far for keeping up the filament are these food containers, which are airtight. The humidity will stay under 20%, which is decent. So, yeah, in my opinion, these two are not worth it at all. It's around 50 pounds, one of these boxes, which in my opinion they are overpriced and they are not, uh, they are not doing such a, such a good job. This one is having a blower which is circulating the air and it's also is blowing the air into the desiccant, but right. this one doesn't have any blowers, just heating up the filament. I'm wondering what is happening with the moisture which is coming off from the filament. Probably it's gonna stay inside of the box, then it's gonna go back into the filament. I cannot see any other way. I don't know how efficient is this. We're going to perform a test now. Leave them to cool down and then I will load two filaments and we're going to measure the temperature and humidity inside of the boxes.